join the channel here over on subscribe star rumble and odyssey have all these videos um also they're mirrored over there automatically so rings of power rings of cringe season two uh and he says it will be more diverse which always translates into a less european for some reason i i guess peak diversity is peak diversity is like wakanda people look at that and go it's all diverse how I, I don't think you know have the meaning of this word. Um, so let me get this. Uh, oh, and by season three, it's probably going to be canceled. I, I actually thought, I had, had assumed that they would go all five seasons because of the optics of it. Like they would don't want to admit a loss. Like they would, they have the money to throw away to, to literally like make five seasons that are costing them the money. I kind of assumed they would do that, but now it looks like they haven't greenlit season three yet. So that, I, I got to assume they're not going to give up after just two seasons. So um, let me get this straight. You're telling us that Tolkien's world, his tiny English village that his stuff is based on, I inspired. You're telling us that Lord of the Rings, the Englishman's story based on European mythology. You're telling us is this actually needs non-European in the European story written by an Englishman. That nothing Europeans... <laughs> I think the fans will be really delighted press f to doubt oh i i don't know if the fans are going to be on board with everything it's like well why why would they be on board with, with everything oh well because it's it's something else they're telling you that nothing european is sacred everything european must be subverted corrupted and destroyed that the europeans can't have anything for themselves even if they themselves literally wrote the story that they're no longer welcome in why do they think they can degrade and dehumanize europeans but no other groups well mostly because people let them would you tell an African story and swap in Chinese, Irish, or Germans? How far has the pendulum swung that these idiots are telling us with a straight face that Tolkien's universe must be cast from all over the world? <laughs> it's okay to destroy the English story because that is what Tolkien would have wanted. That He wanted his story to be used to push a cultural Marxist propaganda. They're not telling Tolkien they're telling an adaptation of it, which begs the very obvious question. Why don't you just tell Tolkien's story? That's why people enjoy the stories, because it's his story. Nobody wants to see Amazon's story. Amazon is a bunch of lizard people. This is the bait and switch. You've got name recognition, whether it's Star Wars, Lord of the Rings, or and or Wheel of Time or or Willow or, or anything else that is like She-Hulk, all this stuff has come out lately and you know, I, I will say that um, Wheel of Time and Willow, wow, holy cow, they're on a different level. Go, go, go! Watch like the first ten minutes of either one of those shows. You think, oh, it couldn't possibly that be that bad? You turn on the first ten minutes, you're like, holy cow! I'm gonna look to do a video on Willow because it's um, Willow and Wheel of Time are are. I've never seen shows like this. Like they would be the equivalent of a TV show, right? I've never seen anything like this before. This is a new era of TV. Where it's like, did you set out to make something bad? Did you? It's like, did, did you hire teenagers to make this? I, I'm gonna have to look at who, um, who the writers are for Willow. That is, I mean, that is a weird interpretation of Willow. <clears throat> the thing is, Willow and Wheels of Time. When I say it's unwatchably bad, you think it's exaggeration until you go watch the first ten minutes of it, and you're like, oh, this is literally unwatchably bad. Here, look at me turn it off after ten minutes. That's what that's what happens. So, um, why don't they just tell Tolkien's story? Because you know. They're um, crap people. It felt natural to Amazon that they could improve Tolkien by removing the Europeans from the European story. But that's not Tolkien. That's Amazon. We're at the point where they're flat out saying that if Europeans want anything for themselves, they're istophobic. Every other group can have things for themselves, but everything European must be destroyed. And, you know, sometimes it's good to kind of just frame the obvious, like just keep repeating the obvious without a politically incorrect interpretation just to kind of put the ideas out there and say, oh, this is what they're doing. And then and then it kind of puts them on the back foot. They have to, uh, liberals have to justify and explain it. It's like, you don't have to argue with them. It's like, you just say, oh, this is what I observe them doing. And then liberals say, and then the liberals will in inevitably uh, deflect and straw man. But you don't even have to follow up the argument. You just have to put the idea out there and then you can back away from it and just go, uh-huh, interesting. And they want you to argue, but it's like, you don't have to. You can just put the one statement out there and just kind of, Put it out in the universe and let people think about it for a while. And then the liberal themselves might think about it. And then they kind of start noticing this stuff. And they start thinking and making connections like, huh. At some point, you just come to the conclusion like, they just really hate people of European descent. 
which is weird because um, I don't hate anyone. I, I feel I feel like we're pretty awesome. So um, one of the straw men they raise is that people are threatened or disgusted by a non-European character in the story. A straw man, I hear it right here, is a uh, an argument that you didn't raise. They raise it so they can knock it down, or they just use it to frame you in a negative light. So on one uh, or one person will raise an issue and they'll apply that argument to the herd. It's I know there's a Latin, not reduction ad absurdum. It's something like that. Uh, it's the Jordan, the Jordan Peterson, I think. He's a, some Canadian professor who's get getting uh, interviewed by this insane woman. Where God, she took L after L, and then later she got on Twitter and she tried to like tried to rehab the, the thing, and people were just looking at her like, "You are a crazy person, arguing like a child." Uh, she kept trying to reframe his argument with, she would say, so what you're saying is, it's like, listen, bitch, I said what I said. I didn't say your straw man interpretation of it. I literally just said what I said 30 seconds ago. You don't need to reframe what I literally just said. If you, you present memory, do you need to roll back the, the hard drive to play the last 30 seconds? You don't need to reframe the thing I literally just said. Like, if you don't understand what I said 30 seconds ago, you shouldn't be giving interviews or, or like it's because it feels like you're trying to, I mean, obviously the straw man, but also feels like you're trying to dumb it down for your audience, which, you know, talk about the soft bigotry of looking at your audience. Um, anyway, you don't need to reframe it, The same thing goes for whether it's Jordan or, or for Tolkien to uh, essentially reframe the argument by in quotes, adapting it for a mostly a developmentally disabled audience. Cause if you, if you like uh, rings of power, uh, or Wheel of Time, or Willow. It's like, way to alienate your, your audience. I know some people said, like, Rings of Power was watchable. Yes. it's Is it better than Willow or um, the other one? Yeah, for sure. Uh, uh, what was the other one I just mentioned? Um, uh, Wheel of Time and Willow, yes. Those are unwatchably bad. Rings of Power, you might be able to watch a couple episodes because you're like, oh, it's the Lord of the Rings universe, sort of. Where Wheel of Time and uh, Willow or What are they doing here? It's it's like they they gave a, it's like it was written by teenagers or, or or like wine moms who are heavily invested in benzos or something, but you know it was like Buzzfeed Tumblr writing of twenty fifteen, which is weird because I the thing is that people have mostly moved past that. People are not threatened by a, um, a fictional character. The story is by an Englishman based on a European folklore. The in group is European people or at least based on them. You're inserting characters that were not in the origin story. People are not threatened. They are confused because you're calling the story Lord of the Rings, but it isn't. It's, yeah, imagine talking to your audience, telling your audience to shut the F up. That is insane. It's, this isn't Lord of the Rings. This is propaganda. If there's a show about Shaka Zulu and it has Eurasians in it, then it's not a show about Shaka Zulu. It's, it's nonsense. And, you know, that, that, like, that's a great period of time history to tell. Tell the Shaka Zulu story. Oh, we couldn't possibly do that. Why not? It's action, adventure, romance. Ah, uh, because it's got Africans slaughtering African people. Yeah, that's that's human history, buddy. Welcome to the world. That that that's not. I mean, that's the the African sub story, but that's also the global story. Oh, but we can only tell stories where blonde man is bad. Yeah, that's why. Like that's why people are sitting back and watching Hollywood burn itself. Um. They, uh, they, they value the Africans, and they don't value Europeans. And getting people to the tipping point, to understand that, to put on the they live glasses, it's like that's why that fight scene was, was 10 minutes long, to get them to put on the glasses to see, because that's how hard it is to get people to see. But once you see the glasses, are, it's a one-way uh, one trip. They don't value European people. Getting people to that tipping point, to understand that these people literally do hate all Europeans, that's a challenge because they don't want to believe that there are people out there that are so evil. And they also, it gets you to this binary of, oh, I guess we have to do something about it. There's this awakening that needs to happen for the middle of the political bell curve. <laughs> Gee, the world is not as you were led to believe, but via 70 years of media and government school brainwashing has led to mine numb sheep just repeating platitudes that globalism is our strength really well it it, uh, it doesn't seem to sell shows so there there must be some people who are catching on it's like even they can parrot this stuff in the conscious mind but the subconscious looks at these shows and goes like oh this is this is cancer one point amazon isn't making lord of the rings they're making an adaptation using the source material 
But if they told the original to- story, it would sell because that's why people read the story. They're, they connected with the original story. This sounds so obvious to say. It's like this is what a bit, the definition of a bait and switch. You read, you read the Hobbit. You like the original story, and so and then oh, we're gonna. If, like, don't get them wrong, they will probably remake The Hobbit and the original Lord of the Rings any day now because the original movies are obviously not diverse enough. Like, we're going to take this and destroy everything you had any attack- attraction to. Like, the books are still out there. Yeah, but the kids are too stupid to read today, so they're like, everything is everything is like kind of TikTok generation. Um, but the thing is, people are attached to that original story, and they're changing the story and making something that doesn't sell as well so they can spread this, you know, bizarre propaganda this isn't about money. These people are erasing your history one show at a time, and only your history gets adapted, in quotes, for a new audience. Only you get erased. There's only so far I can go on YouTube, but obviously this is about more than movies. I say, oh, hey, look, this looks like a globalist movement to push a narrative. Then they gaslight you and say the thing you see before you actually isn't happening, except it very clearly is happening. Just one group is the focus of all your hatred. Yes, I, I, I wonder what is going on with that. Almonds are getting activated. So they say season, season three isn't green uh, lit yet. Yet the show is such a massive success. It's it's weird. Here's the thing. They already paid for the show. I think they're just going to bite the bullet and keep making the show, even if it costs them hundreds of millions of dollars. Because if it fails, it's an L for the left wing in general. Um, and like I think they would literally rather spend another $300 million, even if they burn it. Um, cause that's how big Amazon is. And if it goes for two seasons and fails, it looks really weird for team globalists. Even if the second season is like two years after season one, because for some reason the Wu flu, I don't know, made delays in them. It's weird how like two entirely different groups of people took that like with different degrees of seriousness. I, I kind of like, I forgot about that like a month after it came off and I didn't uh, pay any, any more attention. Anyway, like, comment, subscribe. See you guys on the next episode.